Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Dion and you are watching Reptiliatus channel. If you like this type of content, if you love reptiles and other exotic animals such as arachnids and isopods, please consider subscribing down below and don't forget to ding the notification bell there to know when my next video is coming out. So you guys have highly been requesting that I do a video on the baby toke geckos. For those of you that aren't aware, I own two toke geckos. The thing is, I have some news to tell. I don't know where to start here. All right, guys, so bear with me here. Back in June, right around a week before Pet Fest, no. I noticed that Moana had laid a second clutch of eggs. So she had laid four eggs. And I noticed then that she wasn't really eating. Something was off. When I went into the enclosure, I wanted to move her into her own enclosure because I saw that she wasn't eating. I also noticed at that point that that second clutch of eggs had gone missing, which is usually indicative of the female having consumed them to get more calcium because she's deficient. This part gets really sad. As soon as I went in to coax her into a container, she sort of peeled off the wall backwards and fell on the ground and was in a seizure. Guys, it was really messed up. I know I sound kind of detached about it now, but I was devastated. It was terrible and it's been months, but she went into a full-blown seizure and she passed away in front of me. It was, it was seriously, it was literally so messed up. I honestly don't know what happened. She was eating fine. Everything was good up until laying that second clutch, which is why I think that she went into calcium shock and somehow I didn't notice in time and it took her life. Fast forward, I thought to myself, it'd be nice to introduce a new female to Tiki. What I didn't know is that toke geckos can actually form monogamous bonds with each other. I'd seen them in pet stores, several groups together. Mind you, they usually were young, wild caught animals, not adults. So I thought, hey, it'd be fine. I went on Kijiji, which is kind of like our version of Craigslist, a classifieds platform. And I saw that there was a couple there looking to find a new home for their female toke they'd owned for a few years. So I thought to myself, oh, this would be a great opportunity. I actually arranged to meet up with them and I adopted that female from them. Silly me, after some quarantining, decided, okay, let's introduce this female to Tiki. And as soon as I put her into the enclosure, he literally attacked her. He went for her leg, he was chasing her around, and I was like, oh my god. So I took her out and I hit the Facebook groups. There's a really good Toke Gecko Facebook group. And everyone there let me know that the reason he did that was because he's protecting Moana's eggs. So there's two eggs still in the enclosure. He was protecting them because female Tokes will consume other female Tokes' eggs so that that male will stop guarding them and reproduce with her. So it was interesting. It's kind of the opposite of what you see in the animal kingdom where males will go and kill off cubs or other offspring so that the females go into heat again and cycle and then they can procreate and pass on their genes. This is the opposite. It was a female animal looking to do the same thing. So I was feeling like an idiot. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've made as far as like getting an animal and not knowing what I was doing. So I ended up moving her aside and she's housed temporarily in a smaller enclosure and she's doing great. My beautiful female, she's already not happy that I'm there. Okay, okay, don't worry girl. We're not gonna do anything. Let's back it up and just zoom in. You can see she's a gorgeous, like reduced. It's okay, honey, you're okay. I'm really far back, like we're not that close. She's in here, she's doing fantastic. I've owned her since late June and uh, we'll be introducing her to Tiki, as I mentioned, in about a month or two. So, you do you, girl. Oh my gosh. I don't know how she got spooked there, but uh, we'll let her be. Bye. What you should know is that two lovely little toke gecko babies hatched from those eggs and they've been living with Tiki over here behind me in that enclosure since for the last three months since they've been, I guess, alive. So without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to them, show you the toke twins and uh, let's see if we can feed them. I've been trying to kind of slowly train them to be less shy around me in the same way that Tiki's comfortable coming out for food but they're still babies and they're still pretty shy. What I'd like to do, and let me know in the comment section down below if you wanna see this, is eventually separate them and start trying to hand tame them. So I'm hoping to actually do like a proper series and show you guys the steps I take to hand tame my toke babies. So let me know, because 
if it's not worth wasting time on, I won't make a video about it. I'll just do it for fun myself. But if you want to see that, please comment. Let me know. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the Toke twins. All right, guys, so the enclosure is open. Here is my very basic Toke Gecko setup. Now, a lot of you in my last video were asking why I keep my Toke so dry and plain. There's two reasons. One, I've been keeping Toke Geckos for about five to six years now, and this is how I've kept them. I find that it's not that they're just versatile animals. I think they're very adaptable to living in different kinds of environments, and they don't necessarily need super high humidity. Mine have always been kept on the drier side with a water dish, and they're misted nightly to elevate the humidity, but I don't go and keep them in like wet or very moist substrate with a bunch of plants. I'm planning to eventually give them more plants and do up a nice bioactive, but I have reasoning that I will explain in a future video coming up in the next week or two as to why I haven't put a lot of effort into bioactivating and making a very fancy schmancy tank for these guys. Anyways, that's that explanation. Let's go ahead and look at these guys. So first things first, we're going to get Tiki out of there. He is currently in the cork hollow with his offspring. So you can see him. He's in there. Hey, bud. You want to come out for us? Tiki. Yeah. Oh, look. I'm trying to get Tiki out. Look who's coming instead. Come on. Oh, my God. That kind of scared me. So one of the Toke twins just grabbed that mealworm instead of Tiki. Come on, Tiki. What are you doing, dude? Oh, my God. The twins are just getting all of these. So here you can see Tiki is in the cork hollow. He is guarding his young. So he's not exactly... Whoa. Okay, okay. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, that's the first time he's done that to me. Holy mackerel. His babies are down in the hide. Somewhere. So funny enough, one of the little guys bolted out of here and I was opening the container. So I'm just going to show you where they're at right now. They're still a little spooked. They they squeak and squall. And yes, they do that. It's like all tokes. It's okay. But I'm starting to gently try and get them used to being handled a little and i mean it's baby steps but as you can see he's i mean it could be a lot worse with how annoyed he is by me but no need to be so upset so this is how we start it's just little steps like this just handling a little bit so you can see he's stressed we don't want to overdo it but what we want to do is just kind of get him to climb up on. And he's very weird about how he moves on me because he's not comfortable. But we want to get him to start walking up and down on my hand and just becoming more comfortable, eventually offering some food from there. And eventually that'll get him to a point where he doesn't fear the hand as much. Okay, little baby. You have to take advantage of their size. Right now they're so small, this is the best time to be training them because if you take a bite, it's not gonna hurt, right? So just like gently handling here and there in moderation. So we've held them a little bit today. The next step would be maybe to try and have him like this. And then in the other hand, you know, come along and whatever, like offer some food and, and get them to the point where they just associate your hands with being the bearers of food, and it's not to be something all stressed out about, right? Hey, buddy, you okay? Okay, he's pissed. Go home, go home. Okay, go ahead. All right, guys, so now that it's actually dark, uh, the tokes are gonna be a bit more active. I've got some crickets here uh, with lots of bee pollen dusted on them. So what I'm gonna do first is kind of see if we can do a little bit of tongue training with the young. See if we can get them to come out. Yeah, come on, baby. Up. Come on. Up you go. How bad you want the cricket? You gonna come for it or not? Come on. See how he just keeps peering out, but he's really shy? So now I'm gonna go in here, be a little more invasive, and I'm going to try and actually take a baby and pick them up and handle them, just to get them a little used to it. It stresses them out, there's no denying that, but we do want to interact with the animals a bit. So, there's one. So there they are, and you can see their old eggs that they came out of. So we do have 
I do have to watch. This one is a little smaller than the other one. So I'm gonna take the cork out and we're gonna try and pick up a baby. Okay, now we have to be careful because they're both hiding behind him strategically. And that's when we don't want to get too, too close and cause any ruckus. So we do want to be a bit assertive and just pick them up. So we're just going to do a little bit of minimal handling like this, just like that. So that way they kind of get used to you. They purposely do go all limp and weird when you handle them. I don't know how to explain it. It's like they know you're they're on you and they like they don't hold you the same way. See? But it doesn't matter. You just need to take advantage of their size and show them that you're not a threat. So being assertive is important because otherwise you're just constantly chasing them all over the enclosure and making them feel like you're trying to hurt them. So see the little guy there? He is still spooked. But this is the first step, doing this. Maybe gently coaxing, like, or gently rubbing a little. Showing them that you're not harmful. And as they start to seem more relaxed in this type position, that's when you could consider, like, offering an insect in the opposite hand. So we're not there yet. But eventually I could try and give them a cricket in this hand so that they think to themselves, okay, yeah, like, this thing's not going to hurt me. Then, to initiate that handling, you could even have a cricket in one hand and have them come to your hand once they become more comfortable. But this is all I'm doing with my baby Toke is I'm just holding them a little bit like this. I'm going to start trying to do it maybe once a day so that they get used to me. And that's all it is. Because again, it's one thing to get bitten by a little tiny guy like this. It's a whole other thing when they're tiki size and you're trying to hand tame them then. That's when it becomes a lot more challenging and a lot more painful of a process. And frankly, at this point, I'm not even interested in trying to hand tame Tiki. I just think it'd be fun to try and um, hand tame his offspring here. So see this guy's mellowing out a little bit. He's kind of more relaxed. I can like pet him, but he's, you know, I know he's a little restless, but yeah. It's this kind of thing. Notice that he's not even trying to bite. You can gently nudge him and he doesn't feel all too threatened. He's weary, he's cautious, but not too bad. Very, very cute. All right, so that's one baby. Go, go ahead. You okay, where's your papa? Let's see now if we can possibly get them to eat a bit for us. I'm not convinced they will, but that would be a fantastic thing to have happen. Would you like to eat? Oh, good job. Now, are you going to take one? Oh, come on, guys. You got to be kidding me. Here. There you go. Sharing is caring, all right? So that's a fantastic sign. It shows me that the animals haven't been stressed enough. That they don't want to be eating after the handling. So that was a great, that was a great handling opportunity. Papa with his baby. Very, very cute. Very cute. And for those of you who have said that they, these guys don't have any parental instinct, like, look, come on. He's hunting crickets right now. He's stalking them, and he's right in front of his offspring that's moving. They know it's their offspring. They don't harm them. It's really something. Look. Look at that. He even steps over his offspring. Get it. You got it. Good job, buddy. And you, little baby. Thank you for letting me handle you. All right, guys, I think what I'm gonna do now is put everything back in the enclosure and we'll call that a training session. 
Put the first piece of wood back here. It comes across just like that. And there we go. That's the enclosure. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, did you something I forget right now? <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. If you guys have any questions or want to ask about anything, please don't forget to comment down below and I'd be happy to answer you at my earliest convenience. Thanks very much for watching, guys. See you next time. Hey, you're okay. You don't need to be scared. I'm not gonna hurt you.